This video will be about gobos and how to create them in Blender to create this sort of modern type look for any kind of product. I'll first show you how you can punch holes into a plane to create what would essentially imitate how real gobos work in real life. And then I'll show you how you can embed gobos into an area light itself, which makes the area light act as sort of a projector where we can project whatever shape we feed into it onto, let's say, a background or a complete set. And then I'll show you how you can create an animated gobo using After Effects, which you can then import into Blender and project that onto whatever scene that you are working in. All right, let's get started. So here is the simple little scene that I put together. I have a carpet, a table, a chair, and then some props on the table itself, including a pair of sunglasses, a book, and of course our subject, the Galaxy 5 Pro or something like that. I'm not really sure. And then if I back out here, you're gonna be able to see the two planes that make up my background and my floor. And that is pretty much it for the scene. Nothing too fancy. I'm gonna hit Shift A and add in an area light. And I'm gonna hit R, Y, 90, minus on the numpad and hit enter to rotate the slight pretty much in this direction. And I'm gonna shift the slight way over here. So G and X, drag it over here. And then G, Z to bring it up just slightly. And I'm also gonna scale it up as well. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into top mode by hitting seven on the numpad and then hitting R and rotating the light towards the background. And I might even go to the front view and even rotate this light downwards. And you'll see why in a minute. All right, I'm gonna add a plane into the scene. And right now I want this plane to be right in front of our light. But as you can see, I already rotated it arbitrarily and it's gonna be hard to make this parallel, but with an add-on called Copy Attributes in Blender, you can do that with ease. Just select the plane and then shift select the light and then hit Control C. And then we're gonna copy location and then Control C again, and then copy rotation. And there you go. And then I'm gonna select the plane, and I'm gonna hit G and then Z twice, and then hold Shift and then slightly just click and drag, or just drag with the mouse and drag it forward. And then I'll press S and then scale it up ever so slightly, just like that. Cool. All right, so this plane will pretty much be our gobo in which I'm going to put a grayscale image onto it, which will punch holes into it. And you'll see what I mean. So in order to do this, I need to create another window for myself. So I'm going to pull the corner up and you can see this window just pops open like this or slides open. I'm going to press this button right here and I'm going to hit S for the shader editor and then press N to get rid of this menu over here. And we have our shader editor, but there's nothing in here, obviously. So with this plane selected, I'm going to press new for new material and I'm gonna drag this over here. And this is our current material that is applied to our plane, okay? And it's here where I'm going to place a texture to create the gobo. I'm gonna click on this BSDF. I'm gonna hit Control T to bring in an image texture with a texture coordinate and mapping node. I'm gonna click and drag this over a little bit like this, or actually just bring it down here. And I'm gonna hold down Control, right click and drag over to disconnect that wire. And I'm gonna reconnect it to the alpha channel instead, right there. Now I'm gonna press this button right here and I'm gonna to go to the desktop. I have a gobo prepared already, which is this guy right here. And you can see right now in the viewport that this texture, this image texture was placed or slapped right onto our plane here. And this is what I'm gonna to use to create that gobo. In fact, to see what's actually going on, I'm gonna to go to this window and press the rendered view. And I'm already in cycles, by the way. I'm gonna hop out of the camera and I'm gonna zoom out and you can see already what's going on. If I actually rotate around, you're gonna see it much better right there. So you can see what this kind of gobo image texture is doing in the alpha channel. It's basically taking the black values or the dark values and punching a hole through those values, but anything that's white is still opaque. So in this manner is how I'm gonna create 
like holes in a simple plane so that when the light shines through it, it creates a gobo-like effect. But if you notice right now, obviously there is no gobo effect. So there are a couple of things that I need to do in order to make that happen. The first is to take this light, go down to the object data properties and decrease the beam shape spread angle. I'm gonna set that down to one. You can already see what that does. It basically just narrows the beam angle. That's pretty straightforward. And what that does is it makes whatever is in front of it much more defined. So in this case, this gobo is much more pronounced here on the background, which is a really great start. And at this point, I need to make sure this light is directly on our scene, not on the background. So I'm gonna grab these two together, go into top view, and just rotate it slightly this way, just like that. So that now, yeah, right there, and you can see it, it's hitting our scene which is exactly what we want. If I hit zero on the numpad to go into the camera, we can see what's going on in real time. Maybe right there looks good. Okay, so now I'm gonna hop out of this camera. Let's say now I want to be able to control whatever's on this texture so that I can change the look of the gobo on our scene. So how do I do that? Well, this is what these nodes are for the texture coordinate and the mapping node. I'm not gonna get too into what each of these do because it gets a little bit complicated. So just trust me on this when I go object to vector, point, texture, and there's the start. So we have, we see something a little bit better. And then the rest of the time is just me going into the location, the rotation and the scale of this texture so that I can get whatever I want out of here. So pay attention closely to this part as I play with these values. I'm gonna play with the rotation Y and you can see already what's going on. This thing is moving, this, this thing, this picture is moving on the plane, but essentially these values allow me to adjust that. I can rotate it on the Z, so create a different look like that. And the scale is fine, I'm not gonna to touch the scale nor the location, it's just the rotation that I'm concerned with at this moment. And I'm not getting exactly what I'd like, but what I can do as well, this is pretty common as well in shading. What you can do is bring in a color ramp, bring in a color ramp, and then place this color ramp between the abstract gobo image texture and the shader itself right here. And this node is gonna allow me to basically clamp any of the values, either the black or the white here in this slider. So for example, if I bring the black over, you're gonna see that image texture pretty much disappear. So maybe we don't want that. Obviously we don't want that. We want some effect there with the gobo. So I'm gonna pull in the white instead. And we're getting a little bit more of what we would like. That is actually perfect. I've done this tutorial many times before and I wasn't able to get a clean look. I always had to adjust it, but I got it on this try. So yay me and you watching. Yay. I think for the final touches, I'm just gonna increase the exposure. So if I go to zero to the camera view again, the highlights are a little dark. So I'm just gonna go to the area and go to the power and increase it to maybe 25. And let's go to 35. That looks good. All right, the last component is an ambient fill light, and that's pretty simple, much more simple than this gobo setup here. And that's going into the world settings and playing with this surface tab under color and strength. And right now I had it at a color that I previously had set, which is this color right here. And then the strength, I can dial it up to one. And notice what happens to the shadows. They get a little bit brighter, so it creates this balanced high key, but still has like dimension to it. I guess in this video, I only called it modern. I'm not really sure how else to call it. It's this gobo look that has this nice balance. Cause for example, if I were to come into the strength and then bring that down to zero, we pretty much get this very dark and moody look, but a lot of these values are crushed. Like on the book, this is pretty dark here. The chair is pretty dark. We don't want that, right? So we generally add fill light to our scenes to do that. And in this world settings tab, Blender has this really cool feature where we can pretty much illuminate the entire scene all around us. If I zoom out of our scene here, you can see it's just pretty dark, but this allows us to control that by adding a little bit of light information overall in the scene. 
So I like to have it about 0.85. I think one is okay, but somewhere in between 0.5 and one is a good value in this case for me. This is how to pretty much use a real world technique of creating a plane, punching holes in it, and then shining a light through it to get this sort of gobo look. So the other way you can create a gobo is embedding this image texture into the light itself. And that's pretty simple once you see how it's done. So I'm gonna delete this plane and I'm gonna click on this light here. I'm gonna bring the shader editor back up and with the light selected, I'm gonna press use nodes and I'm gonna look for the node structure here. Here it is. So now we have an emission shader, which basically is the way this light shines its light out. So if I come out of here and well, you can't see it now. So if I go into the object properties, visibility and tick camera check on, and you still can't see it. That's because I have this checked on and oh, the only reason why you can't see it is because the beam angle is really at, it's at one degree. So if I actually rotate here, you can see that beam angle right there. It's this little dot. And that's what's illuminating our scene right now is this. And I can prove it by actually going into the light and increasing this beam angle. And you can see it get a little bit bigger. And you can pretty much fill up this entire square just by increasing that beam shape. But we want it low. So I'm going to keep it at one. And what I'm going to do is in this node, I'm going to press control T again to put in an image texture. And I'm going to put that same image texture into this emission shader this time, just like that. And of course we can't see it, at least at the moment, it's because we have to play with these values again. So I'm gonna put object into vector, type, texture, and already we can see what's going on. Let's go to the camera view. And hey, look at that. I already got it to where I would leave it. Yay me. So from here now you can just move the light without having to move any other geometry. I can rotate this, I can go to the front view, I can rotate it up and down, however way I'd like. As you can see on the left side, I'm getting some really unique looks. This actually looks a lot better, right? Maybe like that, but yeah. So that is how to pretty much embed the image texture on the plane itself. And then next, I'm gonna show you how to create an animated gobo in After Effects and then importing that into this scene. All right, I'm in a fresh After Effects scene. And the first thing I'm gonna do is create a composition. I'm gonna call this animated gobo. And we'll leave it at 1080 by 1080, 24 frames per second, that's fine. And then 200 frames long. And I'm gonna keep the background color black and then I'm gonna hit OK. And now we have this composition and I'm gonna hit Control Y to create a solid, same dimensions, 1080 by 1080. Now let's go to fully black and I'm gonna hit OK. And there we go. With this solid selected, I'm gonna hit Control Spacebar to bring up the FX console. I'm gonna type in Fractal Noise. It's actually right there. So this is where we can pretty much customize the look of the type of gobo we want. And I don't want anything too fancy or anything specific. I just need a good amount of black and white values. So I'm just gonna play with the fractal type and just go down the list here. And I think if you just hold down, no, if you hold down Alt, I think if you hold down Alt, does it go down? No, okay, never mind. I thought there was some like shortcut. If there is, you can let me know in the comments down below, but I'm just gonna go through these and see which type of, I guess, animated go I want. So terrain, maybe subscale looks good. Let's try small bumps. Maybe that works. Which one did I see that I actually liked? Dynamic progressive. You know what? Sure. Let's try this one. And then we have other options to play with down here, like contrast. If I increase this, you can deepen those dark values and the white values simultaneously. You can change the, I think the complexity. Oh, I don't see much doing with the complexity. I obviously didn't play with this as much as I should have, but yeah, so the complexity is there. I think the scale is what I wanted. So I can bring this up like so, just like that. And then to animate this, the setting you're looking for is under evolution. So if I 
pretty much use this little dial here and twirl it around. You can see the fractal noise kind of doing something. <laughs> I don't know what to describe this as, but this is pretty much the parameter that we want to animate. So if I just leave it where it is and hit this little stopwatch for a keyframe, go all the way to the end of the composition. And let's say we want to have two revolutions and then we'll hit that keyframe. And if I press U on this solid, you can see the keyframes right there. It's a linear interpolation, which is fine. And if I scrub through it, you can see what it's already doing. So if I hit play, that's gonna be pretty much our gobo. It's a little slow, so maybe I can do two and then a couple more degrees that way. So it's maybe just a little bit faster. Like that looks good. Maybe just a teensy bit faster. I'm gonna go down to this last keyframe. Let's do, I don't know, 230. And let's head back. I think I'll keep that. There is something I want to change here. It looks a little bit too complex. I want to make it a little bit more simple. I thought it was in the complexity. I'm not sure if this is what I'm looking for. Oh, there it is, okay. So there, and then the contrast, I guess that's okay. Maybe like that. So now if I come back here, this is gonna be our gobo. And then I can also increase the scale because it looks a little bit still too big. Maybe like that. Yeah, that looks good. All right, so now what we can do with this is we can go to File, Export. You can go to Media Encoder if you'd like. I'll just go to Render Queue. I'm gonna click on Output module, lossless, and under format, I'm gonna change this to PNG sequence. I'm gonna hit okay, and then I'm gonna specify a location where I want to export this to. Let's go to Gobos, animated Gobo. I already have one set up. I'm gonna put it in this folder. So I'm gonna hit save, okay? And then once all that's set up, I'm gonna hit render, and I will see you back in Blender. Ooh, that rhymed. All right, we are back in our Blender scene and I have the folder of the animated Gobo sequence and you can see it right here, all in PNG images in a sequence, hence a PNG sequence. So we're gonna import this into this texture on the area light. So right here, I'm just gonna be replacing it. I'm gonna hit this little folder here, which is open image, go to animated Gobo and to import sequences, I think this needs to be on, the detect sequences. Once that's on, you can select all by pressing A and then open image, and that should detect everything. So everything here looks correct. We have 200 frames and start frame and then offset at minus one. And then the one thing we do need is auto refresh so that we can see it in the, the rendered view. Okay, let's go ahead and render this. I'm gonna press play. And oh wow, that actually turned out really nice. So if I come out here, there's our gobo that we created in After Effects. And if I press play, you might not be able to see it because it's going to be really noisy, but you might be able to see the animated gobo in action. So if I press play, it did not do anything. Oh, there we go. It's a little slow because it has to, I guess it has to load everything. But yeah, so those are the three ways that you can create that modern product look in Blender, and I showed you how to do it with the traditional putting a cutout Kukuloris in front of the light, and then I showed you how to embed an actual texture into the light itself, and then I showed you how to do an animated Gobo in case you wanted to do an animation in Blender using After Effects. I hope you got something out of this. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.